Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Are <laughs> um, we talking three bedrooms, two bats? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, hey, everybody. Uh, so we're going to get started with our next um, session of D&D Spires of Northgard. Uh, you know everybody here, and if not, uh, we have strategically placed name tags underneath all of our faces. Um, yes, so, uh, Fire, why don't you take it away? Mm. All right. Let me do that. Okay, so, it's been a little bit, but last time on Spires of Northgard, the group traveled across, followed some, you know, strange lizard path marks that they found on the outskirts of the wall after discovering a hole in it and promptly found themselves a kind of cobalt scouting group of sorts. They got rid of the one of the encampments which had many supplies from farms and such that were inside the wall before heading and finding a ship where the supplies seemed to be getting ready to ship to some sort of area. <clears throat> killed most of the kobolds, as well as the hyenas that were with them, and also captured one of them and interrogated it. Uh, during their interrogation, they found out many things, including the name of a creature known as the Frost Queen, who, with a little more digging, um, and with the help of Webster's seemingly impeccable knowledge of the history of Northgard, um, you guys know as a Frost Dragon, that was kind of banished to the Northern Realms long ago. Um, with everything kind of gotten back for the city, you packed it up into a cart, returned, got your payment, and then confronted the captain of the guard about this so-called Frost Queen. Whereupon you learned that he has had his suspicions about this Northern Army gathering for a while, but just hasn't had the authority to send any scouting groups out. Um, with that, <clears throat> you guys uh, kind of offered yourselves to do it for, of course, a bit of money. And after receiving a bit of front payment to pay for supplies, went on your way to kind of prepare for what would come. Um, <clears throat> you guys went to the market, uh, sold off the weapons that you had gathered during the encounter before, um, and then kind of all split up to go your own separate ways, with Fatty, Webster, and Bartholomew going to the archives to study more. Um, Blade of Grass heading down towards the more lower districts to find inquire about guild work. And then Kyoka buying some food. Yeah. And we left off when uh, Fatty, Webster, and Bartholomew had arrived at the uh, archives, had their weapons taken away and all that were let in, and eventually given three books, um, one of which, which was detailing the history of Northgard. Um, one, which was detailing the different types of creatures and uh, their kind of uh, biology and makeup. And then another one, which was a bunch of old journals uh, from when Northgard was first being founded. And that's kind of where we left off. So, do any of you have any questions about the books that you're looking at or looking for specific things? Um, yeah, I mean, I, so I think I have history of Northgard, right? Yes. So is there anything, so I don't really like to read, so I skip to the index okay. and I, I look for, yes, um, yes, yes. uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a very good cleric. Uh, I look for, uh, Frost Queen. Is there anything in the book about a Frost Queen? It's under um, queen, comma, frost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like queen, no, um, and then it lists different queens. The history... It has like a kind of the index doesn't have so much very specific names, but more categories. So it has like certain years to certain years of cataloging of events, major events. Okay. Um, so it's just a second contents page, but at the back of the book instead of the front. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right. They, they well, actually, there is only there, there, there's only one. It's a, it's an older book. And it only kind of just has this at the front piece. It was made a while ago. They need to make a The History of Northgard Revised Edition. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. It's not that very um, interesting of a place. <laughs> yeah, no. They only they updated like every 10 years or so, adding another installment. Get a wizard really to like, a spell on it so that way it like, reads the book to you. <laughs> I mean, that would get uh, people more interested. Like, you can then like listen to it whilst you're doing adventuring and all that. Oh, like a podcast. I, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Plug for our podcast. <laughs> uh, All the episodes are up. I don't know where, but yeah. They're on YouTube. So you can, on on uh, YouTube. They're on iTunes. You can watch them, listen to them, anything. Not, not yeah. yet. No, don't not, them. no, we're not there yet. They're on YouTube. <laughs> they're, they're, they're on iTunes. What are you about? Um, wait, so uh, Bats, did you read the dwarf book? Uh, I am reading it, and the title is... <laughs> you only oh, got through the title? <laughs> <laughs> Dwarf is just a very I'm long sure language to read. Personally, oh. so Fire, can you tell me what I'm reading here? Um, yes, so you have been kind of reading through what appear to be a collection of, like, old journal entries from people who first came to f- found this, or find this, um, this kingdom. Um, many of them written dwarfish because the original people who came to f- that founded Northgard came from the southern mountains and kind of migrated up. And it kind of just details the struggles that they went through adapting to the winters, um, how they how they kind of made special architecture um, just to protect like plant enclosures from the wind and the snow, um, and how they kind of built cities around the idea that. When the snow does come, most of it will kind of slowly slide down to lower sections. So most of the higher, pop- most of the population and the more of the buildings are built as you get higher and higher up. There are more and more buildings. Very cool. It also my types of people. Yeah, they know how to build. They do. It um, also details this kind of event. It, t- it took place about if you look at the date of the journals around two hundred years ago, and pretty much what it explains is like how they were struggling with certain uh, kind of tribes of animals and creatures that lived in Northgard. Um, A few of the entries describe how, like, as they had been expanding, like, they had been getting attacked more and more often by trolls and other creatures such as that. And then eventually what happened was it came to a point where, as you're reading... It's kind of like gets a little bit muddy with the journal entries, as it seems like most of them are lost. But then you eventually kind of, as you're flipping through, find one at the back, um, which is kind of just very long, describing this series of events that happened where it, and in kind of vague language, but what you get from it is that um, all of the monsters kind of rallied to try and take down the city um, underneath the uh, command of a white dragon. And they were eventually defeated by um, because there were powerful wizards that came from a different continent who gave them weapons to defeat them. And eventually they were all driven back to the north. Cool. Nice. Thank goodness for wizards. Is there anything about a wall? Um, looking through them, there, there's not many that really detail much about the wall. Um, but you do eventually find a journal entry that appears to be from one of the people who is building it. And it kind of just lays out the general structure of it, um, how it was built, how it's kind of multiple walls within one. Um, Actually, it has its outer layer, and then it has uh, two more layers inside of it, um, each with kind of varying degrees of space to move up and down it. Um, And actually, it was originally built so that there was enough space inside to fit almost an entire city. Not comfortably, but most of the population could fit inside of the wall. Cool. Yeah. Good stuff. Good book. Um, how how long ago was that? Like, how long ago was so the, most of the White Dragon stuff? Uh, mo- that stuff took place around two hundred years ago. I'm um, looking at the dates. How the dates work is the common year started um, around two hundred years ago, so the year is about two hundred. Um, and it really started after there was this large event that kind of all over the world where eventually civilizations all kind of formed and settled. And that's when the common year was formed. So can I, can I flip to 200 years ago in my book and see if there's anything about frost queen, ice dragon, white dragon? Uh, yeah. So, um, you just quickly look through, looking through the dates and find it. It's, it's right around zero, which is nice and easy for you. Um, and which, funnily enough, you, is at the top of the index numerically. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's not much because these these books were kind of, or the book that you have, this collection was kind of made based on information that was passed down before they started really keeping records. Um, so it's loosely based off of the letters in the Dwarven book and just mouth to mouth word, like just word telling of knowledge that was passed down through generations. Um, but what you do find is kind of just a single little part, which just says like, um, just kind of like the beginning, I guess, um, where it says like the, uh, the armies, uh, the armies of monsters were eventually defeated by, uh, five heroes wielding these weapons that were made by wizards. Um, Frost Queen and her minions were all driven back to the north, and the wall was finished. And then, kind of, the Condon had peace. Interesting. Does it say what, does it say what weapons? Um, it doesn't go into much detail. It seems there's not really much information on that. Conspicuously fine. You would, you would think that would be an important <laughs> aspect. <laughs> the, yeah. the weapons are probably the ones I sold back to the blacksmith last episode. Uh, yes. <laughs> they were probably just on rental from the wizards. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Um, they I were. Mean, they were. They were forty gold an hour. Yeah. Uh, oh wow. Oof, yeah. That's that's tough rights. Wait a minute. Five <laughs> weapons. Five of us. Hmm. Um, I don't need no now we must go on a hunt to find the five weapons I to defeat it. the big bad. <laughs> Um, I feel confident with my my fountain pen. Uh, I think I'm good. <laughs> uh, the uh, five weapons well. conveniently stones that fit into some sort of a gauntlet. <laughs> and, and you know what? Your your pen might be one of the weapons. We don't know. Yeah. I, um, I stare at my pen. <laughs> now we're playing. Um, can we uh, can we get one of the librarians to come back? Um, yeah. There's um, how it works is there's always a librarian that. Um, kind of stands with every group of pr people. So, no. honestly, they probably kinda... pr prefer the term archivist. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they are archivists. Um. Okay, <laughs> they're doing that thing that like shop attendants do when they think you're stealing or something. That they just stand by. Yeah. To, yep. to be fair, you ask for books, and now you're sitting there with your pen out. What do they think you're gonna do? True, <laughs> true. <laughs> you are. You are. I mean, I'm sure you're allowed to take notes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you are. <laughs> You are, but I don't think he's got another b uh, book to write in. So, so can <laughs> I, I have a um, contract? Can I, uh, can I ask the archivist um, if he has oh. any books about these ancient weapons? We're curious about these five ancient weapons that um, drove back the big bads. <laughs> the big bads. All right. <laughs> um, you say that he kind of quickly looks down at the book. Thinks for a second and then uh, beckons you all to stand up and uh, re blindfolds all of you and proceeds to lead you to another section of the archives. Um, you kind of follow down an another set of stairs as the it slowly kind of gets colder as you feel like you're descending into the earth now. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually you're on a blindfold and you're it's dark, it kind of smells a little bit dank almost before eventually a lantern is lit and set on. A stone table. The archivist goes and walks over to this large um, bookshelf with this kind of iron lock on it and <laughs> unlocks it, takes out a book and walks over, hands lays it on the table for you all, and then proceeds to stand there. Uh, just just one book. Just one book. Okay. Um, what is the name of the book? Um, as you look at the book, it doesn't really have a title. It's it's a leather bound book. Um, the Diary has... of Anne Frank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, but it seems it's very ancient. As you look at the leather, it's extremely worn. Um, what originally you assume was uh, thick binding has kind of worn down to these thin kind of sheets, almost that bend very easily, and the paper inside is aged. Mm -hmm. um, and seems to be mm -hmm. kept down here to specifically to preserve its form. Um, is it written in common? Um, let me... I believe it is written in Elvish. Huh. Do I speak Elvish? I do! I can read it. 
thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the three languages I have that are non demonic I'm the only one that's not demonic. <laughs> uh... <laughs> All right, so uh, I put on my reading glasses and I, I take a look. All right, so um, hop on your glasses, sit down. Um, and as you look through the book, it appears to be kind of um, a journal. Not like exactly like the entries, but this appears to be a consistent journal um, of multiple entries. No, no, so it is the Diary of Anne Frank. Um, yeah, kind of. Um, except um, what it has is it has a bunch of different diagrams. It's more of like oh. it maps out multiple different things. It appears the person who did it had some artistic inclination when they were doing it rather than just okay. simply writing everything down. Okay. And as you leaf through, there are multiple different diagrams of like uh, the layout of the continent of Northgard. Um, there's a drawing of the wall and kind of like showing the insides of it and sketched out where pillars are and all that. Okay. Um, there's a layout of the city that's been sketched out where major areas are. And then eventually you come to a few pages which appear to be like standard build weapons that you see in Northgard kind of more stout and um, wide weapons that have been you that have been favored by the residents and eventually it comes to these final pages where um, there's just like simple sketches and that's about it um, one of them is of what appears to be like an ironclad knight of sorts um, who has this kind of short cape that's riding off of him he's wearing this iron uh, plate mail armor that comes down in tiers with a visor that goes over and you see um, a sword of sorts that seems to be sheathed. It has um, two wings that come off of each side, making the hilt. Um, you flip it over again and you see this sketch of this, um, this, this person wearing what appears to be leather armor um, and carrying a very fine uh, longer sword Flipping it over, um, you look and it's what appears to be um, just a s person wearing a suit of armor, um, except the armor has these kind of lines that are through it that you wouldn't normally see in a sketch of armor. You don't can't really tell what they mean, but mm -hmm. and then you find um, the last one is of a person and they're kind of. It's not, they're not really even wearing armor, per se, um, but it's leather, cloth, and stuff, and they have um, what appears to be this cloak on that has these intricate designs running through it. Okay, so I see four people. Yes. Okay, and... Um, what was the third one? The, the third one was the suit of armor with the lines through it. Was the suit of armor guy with the lines through it uh, did he have a weapon to this in the drawing? Um, it appeared like he did have weapons on his back, but they didn't look anything special. They just like, like standard weapons. Okay. You couldn't really tell like yeah. if they were enchanted or anything from the drawing, but. And it's only the. Four. Okay, I'm gonna. There's no fifth. Uh, there's no fifth. The fifth weapon is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> it's the power of heart blade is the weapon uh, you just like grab blade by the scruff of the neck and chuck him into a crowd of enemies arrows everywhere everything looks like a pin cushion you, you know uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna you call over the <laughs> shoulders I'm gonna uh, I'm going to call over the librarian and point him at the, the four pictures and say, um, I'm looking for more information on these people and sort of, like, who are they and why are they in this book? It's like you're clicking right. on a link inside of Wikipedia and then <laughs> yeah. you bring up a new Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm you're going like, down oh, a rabbit More, hole. more, more. Yeah. Um, he walks over and looks at them. Kind of, you see him stop for a second and think. Just quickly runs a hand over the drawings and then heads back over to that large case and opens it up again. Kind of looks through a few books before sliding out a very thin, um, again, another journal, it seems, of sorts, and lays it down before closing it. 
Um, looking at the journal, this one appears to be of the same age as the book that you were just reading, mm -hmm. um, except it's only about yay uh, big, while the other one was around that thick of just drawings. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I try to look at the, the title, and I'll, I'll read through it. Or I'll try right. to read through it. Yeah. Um, as you read through, this appears to be a very ancient kind of... Um, it's labeled um, by a man named um, Balgram. Um, that's the name of the person who appears to be, a, to, be, to be writing in this. And what it is, is it's his depiction of these people that he's traveling with, that he met along the way. Um, he describes one of them as a, um, a stoic human wielding a sword of fire. Um, he describes another one as this um, dwarven man ironclad in this suit of armor um, who spoke little but was very wise. Um, he okay. spoke of another who was elvish in nature, um, fleet on their feet, um, and with an inclination to explore and seek out more information. He described... See, so it was the human, the dwarf, the elf. Oh yeah, um, another human fellow. This one, who was more of a, a trickster, a, a jokester of sorts, who would, um, while traveling with the group, who would often play pranks, um, and seemed to be more lighthearted. And then it also, just like in the short accounts that it gives of them, describes this. Um, fellow that apparently would occasionally travel with them who had a mastery of the arcane arts and um, was just very powerful and kind of mysterious. Um, okay, and the and does it say anything about Balgrim himself? Like, is he human? Is he something else? Um, in the short description that Balgrim gives of himself, um, he says that he's just kind of a... He's a half-elf who was traveling, just looking for adventure when he met this group, and eventually headed up into Northgard on their travels. Um, you assume that the journal ends probably around the time he died, you would guess, mm -hmm. because after kind of just describing their trek up into Northgard, um, it is just cuts off. Okay, and the fellow... Uh, I mean, sorry, the... Uh, the trickster who liked to do pranks and was lighthearted, does Balgram describe him in any way, human, like any race? Um, he says that he looked human, but when they were... He describes an, an incident when they were confronted by guards, um, mm -hmm. and they presented a wanted poster of him, and his appearance changed into that of another man. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the fellow master of the arcane arts, uh, is there a description for that guy? Um, or person? There's not much of a description of how he looks. It's just a description that occasionally they would um, meet him in their travels. He wore a hood, and he actually was apparently the one, um, a person who made them, who would like, constantly make them weapons when their old ones broke, um, being adventurers. And so that was kind of his what he would do for them. For a little bit of pay, of course. Okay. Does it say anything like where was it that Balgrim first saw this wizard guy? Uh, um he doesn't describe he says he um in his accounts he says he doesn't know when they first met the wizard. He just knows that multiple times while they were traveling through cities and stuff, they would just kind of run into him and they'd be like, Oh hey, we are we recently broke a weapon. Can you uh make us a new one, or re-enchant one, and he would always be willing to do that. Okay. Uh, hmm. I, I sort of, like, get the group together, or the people who are with me, um, kind of point them out, explain the situation about the guy, the people, uh, and I sort of ask, like, so should we be finding the actual original weapons, or should we be finding, like, a wizard who can make a similar weapon? 
I mean, they said that the weapons kept breaking, right? So right. maybe we should find this wizard or his apprentice or something who can make weapons for us. I mean, the only thing I can say is, you know, the weapons were breaking, but that doesn't mean that the the, the magical weapons we need broke. It might be that they had other weapons that kept breaking until they finally got, like, the super weapons. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I sort of, like, say, uh, I look to um, Bats and I go, Bats, do you know any, like, famous dwarves that wore, like, an iron suit of armor? An Iron Man, if you will? <laughs> Please, it would clearly be Iron Dwarf. Um, <laughs> but he's still, the gender is still a gender. You can roll um, a history check. Me? Yep. Cool. Love rolling history checks. Let's see. I have no way of, I think, rolling. My, my roll 20 is messed up. You have this one. Um, yeah. Okay. If, Five. If, if you want, um, I can click the button on your character sheet for you. Okay. Uh, you think about it for a second, Bartholomew, but from the from where you came from and the history that you learned of your people, you didn't really hear of anything like that. Most dwarves that you knew that were famous were just like the people who originally founded the cities. Um, there was like a dwarf who befriended a dragon once. That's about it. Hey, that would be me. <laughs> I befriended a dragon once. Did you really? Yeah, it was a copper dragon from the south. Oh. Um, Yeah. Learned a lot that day. Did you and the copper dragon have a thing? Uh, Yeah, we were friends. We were friends, buddies. I uh, got to know him a little bit. He wasn't so friendly, but neither am I. And... uh, uh, Did you guys do it? Yeah, I asked... (laughs) Well... uh, no, but I figured out where all that gold comes from. They made love, please. Be sensible. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I point to the books, to the group. I was like, I, I don't know if anyone has anything else uh, we can get here. I, I'm trying, I mean, I don't really know where to go. Yeah, I mean, I think if... Uh... I mean, maybe we can ask the captain about the stoic human with the fire sword. That seems memorable. Right, right. Or, uh, I mean, do we? is there like a wizard guild or something around? Actually, yeah. Do, do I know from living here, do I know if there's like a wizard guild? Um, in the or, my, um, or with my magics, yeah. would I know? Like, I, I mean. Uh, um, thinking about it. Um, you know that there are quite a few guilds that specialize in different things. Like there are. Skills that specialize in like going out and hunting to provide, provide food for people who can't necessarily mm-hmm. um, buy it or hunt themselves. Um, you know that there are some guilds that are more like places for people who are looking into magic to study, mm-hmm. um, but they aren't very uh, popular. Um, mm-hmm. Most residents of Northgard do not have an inclination towards magic. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of it's it's slightly scary to a lot of them because they are dwarven um, in descendancy and dwarves oftentimes have a more negative view towards magic okay but there are there is like a guild of magic casters somewhere yeah, in the city there is okay um hmm. so maybe we can try there I mean the text didn't say that the wizards left so presumably they have you know, descendants or apprentices that are still in the city. Yeah, it was two hundred yeah. years ago, is all. Yeah, that's not that's not too long ago. Yeah, I mean, I I can't think of anything else. Uh, I mean, is there anything else we should look up? Uh, hmm. Oh, you know what? Actually, I I point to I actually go to the the librarian. I think it's like name is uh, Google. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna call him Wiki. <laughs> okay, all he's right. gonna be Yahoo though. Uh, <laughs> he's more of a Yahoo. <laughs> but his name Bing. is Bing. Bing, yeah. 
uh, Wiki, um, you know, do you know anything about this fire sword, like a mythical fire sword? Is there any sort of uh, history there with respect to in you know in Northgard with respect to a fire sword? Um, I was going to ask him. He kind of takes a second and thinks. Hey. Kind of slowly speaks, kind of ca- you imagine he's carefully thinking about what he's saying, and he um, says, From the stories that have been passed down, it has been speculated that once the war was over, um, the heroes retired away into their own, uh, their own peaceful lives, and their weapons were lost. Hmm. Did they retire uh, here, or did they leave the city, if you know? It, they all went their own separate ways. Hmm. Uh, I get. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess that sounds like we're, the weapons we're not going to be able to find. We should maybe make new weapons. Maybe, and get them enchanted in a similar way. Well, they just said that the weapons are lost. Clearly we just need to do more asking and figure out... No, that seems like a lot of work. Yeah. I feel like... <laughs> yeah, but just... magic swords. Uh, uh, the archive is kind of... As you guys are discussing this, he speaks up and says, if you are searching to make weapons of a similar caliber from the stories that we know, that would be quite difficult. Why is that? They were um, <clears throat> magic weapons that were forged by multiple different sages from the different uh, lands. Which lands? I believe there was one from Alexandria, one who came from Freylor, another from Altonia, and then they were aided by a wizard from Northgard. And they together made the weapons. Hmm. Alexandria, Freylor, what was the other one? Altonia. Uh, Altonia. Altonia. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Uh, huh. Altonia's looks... in the uh, southwest. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like we need to find this North Guardian wizard. Huh. If only there's some sort of cleric spell that helps to locate an object. A person isn't an object. <laughs> I don't know, no, but... I know no, for a fact that the way that that spell works is that it has to be an object very familiar to you. And it has okay, to I point to a giant... I point to a giant fire sword in the pick in the book. <laughs> and I go, no, it has to, it's not a you, picture, because then you it would show the in the book. book. Familiarize yourself, fatty, and I hit him like I try to hit him into it. Yeah, can I can I cast an attack roll? Uh, let me see if I can cast locate object. It doesn't Cause... work that way. It would just locate the book. Yeah. Yeah. Oh really? And it would be like it's right in front of you. Guys, it's it right would locate that goal. exact page. Uh, yeah. No, I, 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 yeah, you, yeah, you would have to, you would have to be very knowledgeable about it. Okay. Um. All right. Well, actually, maybe you're. I trick you guys, and he's actually right underneath you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fatty, why don't we go both? Why don't we explore both the the wizards guild or whatever, and maybe we can ask your church. I mean, your church is old, I assume. Mm-hmm. It would. It would. They might know something about these weapons. Yeah. I mean, if a sage, if a sage assisted, maybe your own church assisted. Yeah, and they are. You know, our clerics are fire wielders. Maybe they would have interest in a fire sword. Who knows? And it's a it's a winged yeah. it's a winged fire sword, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, like the 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 pawn, the the guard is mm-hmm. our wings. Right. Uh. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. All right, let's do that. Uh, fa- uh bats. Any? You want to finish reading your dwarf book, or you want to do something else? <laughs> It's so good. I love reading about my people's history and uh, how they constructed all those fascinating buildings. But uh, I understand we got to get going and put it down. Yeah, before we go, you know, the book I was reading, the one that had like diagrams of the walls and stuff. Did mm-hmm. I notice any sort of secret, like any sort of passageways that stand out to me that like 
you know, if I was just an average person looking at a wall, it wouldn't, it would seem odd that that would be there. Uh, roll investigation. All right, I can do it. You can do it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I, can 18. I? 18. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Um, you take a second time to look through the book. Um, I'm looking at the diagrams of the wall. You don't see um, many like entrance ways in and out of it, aside from the one like that goes into it from the guard station, um, and then like a single kind of diagonal running stairway that very slowly crawls up it. So much so that if anything was going up it, if the guards didn't want it to live, it would get shot before it could make it all the way up. Okay. Um, other than that. You don't really notice any secret passageways. Um, there are like a few trap doors, but they aren't like really diagrammed where they go. Um, you kind of have the general idea of the location of them. Secret doors yeah. usually aren't on the blueprint. <laughs> it was an old book. Maybe it's not really. It wasn't meant to be a secret. Can I can mm -hmm. I ask Wiki if uh, there's a copy machine in the uh, in the archives? <laughs> Well, actually, uh, I have um, I have a scholar's pack, and I'm pretty good at like taking down notes and stuff as part of my thing. What do you want to write down? Um, I don't want yeah. to write down, but I kind of want pictures of the things that we're looking for. Oh, well, I don't think I I draw well. I mean, you can try. It'd be <laughs> a, uh, probably be a performance sleight of hand. You're gonna give me sleight. All right, I can try. Can I? Can I, I have... cast. Can I cast guidance? Can I? I, I touch you on your shoulders and I say, I, <laughs> <laughs> I say I believe in you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what what do I do? The best part is that his belief in you has actual effects. Yeah. 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 It's like him believing so you genuinely but, helps. But only if yeah. I touch you. Uh, but, does he add like a D four to it? It, it yeah, adds a D four to yeah any right, any so, one okay. roll. And then you can add a D four. How do I do that? I uh, just roll a d4, so slash roll 1d4. Oh, heck, it's taking a long time. Yeah, that's, um, so you just type this. There we go. All right, all right. We'll go with crabs, 16. which is a four. Uh, yeah, 16. Um, you... Or 17, I mean, rather. Yeah, you, you've, been, you've been a lawyer. Um, I am. Yeah, you are a lawyer. You you're used to copying down maybe notes or scenes um, to for evidence or whatever. Um, so while it's not perfect, you do get a fairly good copy of the things that you want. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's not like not as beautiful and completely detailed, but the important things are there. Mm -hmm. I once got an arsonist off by recreating uh, the, the house that he allegedly <laughs> tried to burn down and got, can prove that he actually didn't do it. You got you you got an arsonist off? I mean, he alleged arsonist. He alleged arsonist. All right, let's go. Yep, let's go. So why don't we walk back towards our buds? <sighs> All right. It amuses me greatly about Webster that... Every single time he mentions someone that he's helped, like, not get in trouble, it feels like they genuinely still should have gotten in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I like, represent I those. the way that you word it or what, but, like, every single person that you mention feels like they are, like, very, very guilty. Well, I mean, I represent people who no one else would want to represent, and so... Have, yeah. have you ever represented, like, this woman whose, like, bakery is, like, about to, like, get taken down by some bigger <laughs> conglomerate bakery? <laughs> <laughs> that I seems mean, like a good people thing that, to do, but that, I doubt that, you've that, done that. That story is, is uh, very close to Samarkand's heart, I think. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I haven't actually. You know, that, that might be a good business model. I'll, I'll think about that yeah, one. But the thing is, Blade I mean, isn't there, and I'm not talking in a French accent, so. <laughs> yeah. I, I once represented uh, a conglomerate who was being accused of poisoning a town, and this, like, sassy woman kept getting in my way trying to stop me, but, well, she didn't. <laughs> That's the she part of Resident Evil 2, by the way. Ironically. So, oh, I'm sorry, Resident Evil 2. As you all... <laughs> 
as you all eventually leave the archives, the books are put back, you're blindfolded again, eventually led back to the entrance, your weapons are returned, and you exit. Uh, Kyoka, you were... You bought food, correct? I bought food. Was there anything else you wanted to do with your shopping time? Uh, yes, I'd like to find a bathhouse. Somewhere to unwind and relax. Alright. Um, roll investigation. Investigation. 18. 18. Alright. Um, yeah, you kind of just like, using your instincts kind of, you're like, eh, there's a lot of houses here. Um, and you head down to where it seems like a stream kind of pulls off and you find there appears to be a small bathhouse. Um, you walk in and there's a there's an elvish gentleman, uh, very finely dressed, sitting like standing at a counter as you enter and it's nice and wooden. There's lanterns, um, carpets and stuff right at the entrance with a few couches. Entering says, Ah, welcome. Are you looking for a simple stay? Uh I'm looking for a Brief relief from the day-to-day troubles. Someone to wash my clothes while I is go through a day. Competitors. <laughs> brief <laughs> relief. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, he's, he's, he says, "All right. Um, how long would you like to?" Uh, two to three hours. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. Monks down something. All right, that will be uh, 20 gold an hour. 20 gold an hour? Make it two yes. hours. <laughs> two For all hours. persuasion. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm just changing the amount of time I want to stay. I'm oh, not, okay, two hours. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, he said, all right. All right, um, two hours. Okay, and you wish for your clothes to be washed? Just the coat, please. Just the coat, all right. <laughs> um, then you can leave that when you change you can leave it in the basket um and we'll have one of our washers come by and pick it up right. that that bath is expensive it cost as much as it cost me to get like a brand new set of really good armor <laughs> yeah. that, hey these are heated baths yeah yeah yeah, yeah. If I right, um, he, which in the north i imagine is quite expensive. yeah yeah um so he uh, quickly points you to uh, you walk down this hallway and there's a bunch of different rooms that branch off um he, you enter one of them gives you a key to it. Mm-hmm. As you walk in, it has this little changing room uh, right before it, where it just has a small basket where you can put dirty clothes, a bench mm-hmm. to change, um, and a few towels that are sitting on a railing. Cool. Uh, I'll take the coat off, put it in the basket, uh, all right. and all the other clothes and unwrap my bandages. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. And then just lay down in the water. Yeah, all right. You eventually do that, then you head through these kind of sliding doors, and it's this nice. It's it's not the largest, but it's like large enough that you could that you can comfortably lay down in it. Um, cool. And as you lay down, it's warm. It's not especially hot, but compared yeah. to the weather out there, it is very nice. And yeah. so, cool. get a nice bath. All right, yeah. so you do that. Uh, Blade. Yeah, you so, um... were looking for the gilts. Yeah, I was looking for like some sort of hunting. Like you mentioned earlier, how there was like guilds that are skilled in like hunting down beasts and stuff for food. Yes, there are mercen. Yeah, yeah, there are. That's there exactly are. Blades Alley. He used to All be right. a hunter back in his old town. Yep. Before All right. So the you um. Incident. The yes, the incident. We speak not of the incident. <laughs> Blade doesn't speak right. of the incident. So um, yeah, it takes you a little bit, but eventually. Find your way down to where you there are these multiple different large kind of hall type buildings, um, each with their own little name and symbol emblazoned on the front. They each have a little area that's fenced off um, and yard. Some of them have like tables out in the yard. Some of them have like um, training dummies. Um, it doesn't. It's not too hard for you to kind of spot out the different types. Um, there's one that's literally just it has a boar's head with a bow and arrow behind it. So. Kind of assume that's the hunting one. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so, um... Yeah, I approach, yeah. have a look around, see if there's anyone out front. Yeah, um, you look out front, and there are a few people who are just appear to be, like, practicing archery out in the front. Um, if anyone makes eye appears. contact with Blade, Blade makes the polite nod. All right. Uh, you get a few, um... appears to be a few humans and dwarves that just nod as you walk in. Um, 
I'll you head through the front doors. Eyes because Catmen are still not common at all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so you get through the front doors. Um, just kind of push them open, and you walk into a fairly nice area. Um, it's more of like a dining hall that's just right up in the front. Um, you see, there are a few people in, and then there are stairways that lead up to what you would assume maybe are rooms. Um, mm-hmm. A few people kind of glance as you walk in, and then go back to eating. And you can see, like, all the way in the back, there appears to be kind of a desk area where you see a, uh, a an older-looking woman standing at it. Uh, excuse me, is this the uh, Hunter's Guild? Oh, um, yes, yes, it is. Um, Good, I've, I would have uh, felt like an idiot if it wasn't. Well, you never know. Yes. I've heard some stupid stuff in my life. Yes. <laughs> I have been told so, I am uh, stupid stuff before. Not very nice people. Well, if you ask me, you're quite cute. I do not get that very often. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> I used to have cats, so. Uh, I have not had a Anyway, what are you here for? Um, <laughs> yes, I was wondering if. Do you guys do uh, contract work? Um. Yes. It, do I need um, to join the guild in order to do this contract work, or is this something that I can do on and off? If you join the guild, you would get a um, a more solid chunk of the pay from the job. Does it but if you to wish join to the do, guild, um, there is no cost, but you would have to do a trial of sorts first. Well, I do like tests. I would, can right. I please do this test to join the guild? Um, yes. Um, is it just you? Uh, yes, it's just me. All right. Normally what we do is we have, um, <clears throat> we have requests that people file in, and if someone is looking to join, we will give them one of the easier requests, and if they can fulfill it, um, of course, we will allow them to join. Um, once you join, we will give you um, your own room, um, free food, which is always a plus, and mm-hmm. the ability to come back, do jobs whenever you want, and you will yeah. earn about seventy-five percent of the money that is offered during the uh, job. I would like to clarify that I am out of practice in terms of my tracking, as I am from very far south, and there is not this much snow down there. I see. I see. That is all right. That is all right. Yes. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, one quick, let me look through the requests. And she kind of goes down through a file of sorts and shuffles through them before taking one out. And, uh, all right, this one looks good. Um, hands over to you and says this um, sheet of paper um, just filed out by a citizen. It appears like they're looking for about uh, two pounds of meat. Uh, it can be any kind as long as it is edible. Mm-hmm. Um, and about... They want uh, four wolf hides to make clothing, and then they're willing to pay up to uh, two gold. Uh, no, they're uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> ten gold for each pound of meat, and then uh, for the four wolf hides, they're paying another a uh, twenty gold. Okay. Yeah, I like. Is the contract for me to keep? Um, you um, just you just of course. We, we need you to just kind of here's another form. This is a uh, contract form. You put your signature on it, say you'll complete the contract and if not, you're not going to get anything from it. Um, yep. Yeah. So like that's pretty much grabs that. the contract and in the signature draws like a little sword and then passes okay. it back. <laughs> all right. She looks like she's interesting. She knows and says, all right, um, there's all right, not really a time... Written. I should probably have introduced myself. I am Blade of Grass. Oh, that's a very nice name. (laughs) My father gave it to me. I see. Uh, My name is Shafin. Shafin. It is a pleasure to meet you, Shafin. Shakes your hand. Yep. My hand is fluffy. (laughs) (laughs) That does not go unnoticed. Um, All right, so she kind of looks and says, all right, um, once you have gathered the materials, um, simply return. I believe the client wishes this to be within the next snowfall. 
Um, so within the week, I will say. No problem. I will head out as soon as possible. All right. Nods and gives you a wave. All right. So with that, um, the three of you who are returning from the archives, um, you guys are heading down to the guild halls, right? Right. Uh, <clears throat> can we stop All by, right. like, an armory first? An armory? Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, I'm trying to find multiple different shops that have weapons um, and armors of sorts that are up for sale or for a request to be bought. Mm -hmm. um, so you just kind of stop by one of the uh, what appears to be one of the kind of more well-stocked ones, mm -hmm. they'll say. Now I'm going to enter in. Uh, there's a half-elven fellow sitting at the desk, kind of enter. And there's multiple people who are going through the armor, shining it, um, taking a sword down, making sure it's still in good shape and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so I go up to the, uh, the half-elf and I say, greetings, brother. Um, and I... Ask if he uh, buys and sells armor pieces. Um, says, um, oh yeah, definitely. Um, we're always looking for more materials to uh, use and recycle for our own uh, makes. Okay. Um, so I take out my, um, so I take out the 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 chainmail. Mm -hmm. This hundred pound chain mail or whatever it feels like <laughs> that I've just yep. been lugging around. Um, yes, say, I'm, I'm I'm looking to trade this in for something a little bit uh, lighter. Um, uh, he, um, he says, "Oh yes, I'm um, definitely. Uh, yeah, I will definitely take that. That is still in pretty good condition." Um, uh, yeah, how much would you? How much would you give me for it? Let's see. He says, "Let's see." Uh, just checks the pieces of metal and the like the leather straps and stuff and make sure. Mm -hmm. Um I would say uh round sixty gold. Um for just the metal pieces because they're in good shape. And then for the uh leather, uh I would say twenty six silver would probably be good. Um since we can sell that off to a leather worker and get it uh used for other pieces of armor. Okay. And I kinda look around and um do I see any like any medium armor that I can? Um, yeah. Let me real quick check. The best bet would probably be something like breastplate. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah. Looking at a breastplate or. You yeah. have... Let me just get this. Yeah, I'm just getting it up real quick. <laughs> There we go. Right, armor, light armor, medium armor. All right. Um, yeah, as you look around, there are um, there's a few things. There's a breastplate. Um, there's a half plate. Um, and there also appear to be a few like um, hide uh, pieces. Um, not many of them. Um, and then also like a chain shirt. Uh, half plate still gives disadvantage. Yeah. And uh, yes. I know how bad disadvantage on stealth is. Um, how much for the breastplate? <laughs> um, let me. Uh, da, 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 da. He kind of walks over and uh, quickly checks out. And he says, "Um, I would say uh, we sell these for around sixty gold." Uh, okay. Um, so can I? Can we? Can we trade? And can I get the twenty-six silver for the leather? And, uh, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, kind of takes your set of armor and brings it to a back room before taking down the breastplate. Um, it says, um, this shows you where the straps are to fit it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, and then hands it over to you and says, and also for the leather, 26 silver. And hands it over. Awesome. Um, and how much would you pay for, uh, just a set of leather armor? Um, <laughs> I don't know. We don't use too much leather here. Um, I would say 16 gold, maybe. 16 gold? 
Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I might hold on to this. Um, yeah, I'll I'll hold on to it for a bit. But thanks so much. All right. All right. Um, thank can you. I, can I walk right. outside and see if there is like a leather worker somewhere? Leather worker. Uh, yeah. You um, kind of walk outside. It doesn't take too long. You just quickly take a glance around, um, and you find a leather working shop that makes um, just specialized things like if you want gloves or things like that mm -hmm. um kind of head in there's a human uh woman standing brown hair mm -hmm. um currently seems to be stitching something okay. he says, oh hello um hello um i was wondering if you would be interested in buying some uh some extra leather that i have uh yeah uh, of course um just depending on how worn it is um so i show her the leather the leather armor all right. Um, have you taken? You've taken damage, correct? Before? Um, I'm. I think so. Okay. Mm. All right. So um, she looks at it and looks at it. Um, let's see. Seems in pretty good shape. Um, there are a few pieces that are um a little bit torn. I could, probably couldn't use those too well. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's see. While while she's saying this, I kind of nudge Webster. <laughs> Yes. Huh? Kind of... I'm sorry. Did you? Uh, I'm sorry. Are Are you looking to retain my services? Um. And I. I uh. Uh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. I look at her. I was like, Madam, Madam, Madam. Uh. This This is the finest leather in. The entire vicinity of Northgard. I mean, are you a leather worker or or just a common spinster? Uh, this is like solid gold work here. Uh, I think uh, you know it's worth at least how much did you say? How much did uh, she offer? Yeah, it was it was sixteen. Gold um, she had not Yeah, it was sixteen gold across. She hasn't made an offer yet. <laughs> okay, well, I mean. it's so 16 across the street, uh, you know, like, this is almost a, an antique. I mean, it's seen combat and has survived. So I think we're talking at least 20 gold. I mean, realistically, maybe 22 gold. All right. Uh, roll persuasion. Can All I, right. can I, I'm, I'm touching <laughs> him on his shoulder, too. As I say, you know, you should talk to my best <laughs> kid. And really, I'm praying. Like, <laughs> please, Father. All right. <laughs> you don't need to pray. You don't need to pray. Yeah. When you hire Webster, <laughs> your God can sit this one out. Uh, that's a twenty-five. Uh, yeah, you, you're saying this, and she's like, kind of looking at it, and she's just like, she's like, looking at it, and she's like, well, I mean, I guess now that you mentioned it, it is, you know, it's obviously seen combat and still s survived, so. 22 gold. I look at Fatty. Um, I say... Um, I go, it's a good offer. True, but... A but, solid offer. But did you mention that this is also holy armor from the Church of Halden itself? And as I say that, I touch the armor and I cast a light on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's fraud. <laughs> That's illegal. Yeah, I mean, what okay. happened to your honesty? At this point, no deception. <laughs> Roll yeah, no, deception, uh, yeah. Hold, That's no, no, hold true. on, hold on. It is from the Church so, of Paladin. But it is not holy armor. Okay, I, well, I leave that it, part Is out. it holy if a priest is wearing... Okay. I think so. Um, I'm gonna say, like, when I see it's illuminated, I was like, oh my word, I've <laughs> never seen such 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 glorious armor before. I, I'm sorry, madam. I, 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 I should have done more research on my own client. I mean, this is really at least 30 gold. For such fine worksmanship. Man, you lay it on so thick. Raw uh, persuasion. Persuasion? Okay. Yeah. Thicker than people who haven't had Nutella and ages spread it on toast. Yeah, not, All right. <laughs> or not great. You say this and she like, looks like you, like Vegemite you put on real thin. <laughs> hmm. Jesus. I'm willing to raise it up to 24. Ugh. You drive a hard bargain. Uh, 
Yeah, I think I think we have a deal. Uh, and as obviously, I will take twenty uh, percent commission for assisting in these transactions. So you know, fatty twenty gold. Wait, twenty is twenty percent of twenty four. <laughs> <laughs> what? If it's twenty four gold, and you want twenty percent. That's not twenty gold. Well, no, 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 no. You get the twenty gold. Right. Right. I, I take the four gold. Uh, oh, I was gonna go more generous. <laughs> nah, I'm okay. I, 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 I give. Uh, okay. So I, I'll take the twenty four. I give six gold to Webster. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah. And um, and I take the eighteen gold, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. And I kind of, uh, so I, I, I think the, I think the person at the leather works. And yeah. um, maybe when, when we walk out of the store, I kind of look at Webster and I, I just nod. <laughs> I nod it's what I do. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. I want to go to um, like an apothecary or somewhere where I can buy like a potion if they sell it here. Um. Yeah. So like an herbalist, probably. Yeah. Carry okay. things like that. Alright. Um yeah, since you guys are kind of in uh this market area, you quickly can find your way around. It's kind of the outskirts of the market really. Um and you it's not that hard, but you find an apothecary um or an herbalist. They seems they sell med medicinal herbs as well as um just other things that we use to make potions, as well as apparently it seems like they take orders for potions. They don't have them pre-made. Okay. Uh, I I come in and I'll just be like, ahoy hoy. Uh, greetings. <laughs> uh, okay. um, yeah. I'm looking for uh, uh, some sort of healing potions. Uh, do you guys do you guys have that in stock? Um as you walk in and you um like Hello. Um you look over, um it kind of has this nice little fragrance to it almost. Um, fragrance, not fragrance. Is it patchouli? <laughs> um, it almost smells like lavender. Mm. Webster um, does not care for this. <laughs> it um, smells, it smells like up. a Yankee candle died. <laughs> Lavender's lovely. Yeah, lavender's a lovely smell. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been scientifically proven that lavender helps relieve anxiety. No, this it just makes Webster more anxious. To a devil. Yeah, it just makes me more anxious. I need to, All right. to stay on my toes. Can't be relaxed. Yeah, so as you walk in, um, you look and you, um, you see this, this fellow. He's um, got this gray skin um, with kind of a fairly large, almost bulbous nose. Um, okay. A little bit of a hunchback. Um, and this kind of short brown hair that kind of comes out. Um, kind of large hands as he walks over. Um, you've lived in the area long enough to recognize this as... Um, a furbolg. Oh. Um, there are few, like, kind of tribes of furbolgs that originally lived in the area um, when the city was built and eventually moved in. For so it's like this eight, nine foot tall behemoth of a man. Yeah, right? Um, he, yeah, it's like you don't really notice because he's sitting down. Like, he kind of stands up and he's around like seven feet tall. Yeah, like, furbolgs are just. Leans massive. on it. Leans on it. <laughs> Why, hello. Well, what are you looking I mean, for? Did you ever think a different profession might have been a good idea? Have you thought of basketball? <laughs> no, no, no. I love the plants. Oh, I've lived with them all my Jesus. life. When you do what you love, it's not work. That is true. Yep, so, I you said uh, healing potions, did you? Healing potions, yes. Uh, I'm looking to buy, uh, you know, we get into to a couple of scraps and I'm looking to buy uh, you know some alternative healing alright he can nods and takes that book unfortunately we don't keep potions in stock however we do take orders okay uh, yeah. how much will a, a healing potion run me um let's see a regular healing potion will run you about 50 gold 50 gold that's highway robbery why I could have sworn it's that man two blocks down, a, a recent herbalist in an adjacent city, was selling it for, for 25 gold. That's like the cost of the materials to make a potion. 
<laughs> well, he was he was he he understands that sometimes you have to sell at market so that you can build a strong customer base. I I, 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 don't, I don't like what I'm hearing, but I, I kind of want to see where this goes. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming around well, to Webster's ways. Unfortunately, while of course the price of the herbs on the market would be around 25 gold, we harvest ours naturally and use them to make our potions. Well, I mean, so, I'm not looking for like a Whole Foods healing potion here. I'm looking for something <laughs> less organic, something organically something a little... sourced, non-GMO. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I don't really care about any of that. I want your GMO, non-organic, like <laughs> chocked full of cow hormones. That's like, that's offensive saying that to a verbal. Yeah, basically, <laughs> basically, I want a healing potion that if I gave to like a ten-year-old boy, bam, puberty. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how hormones that's how full of hormones I want that healing potion. Uh roll persuasion. Uh, if he gets this. If he gets this. Twenty one. Um, uh let me just real quick. I'm persuasive and deceptive. Those are my two <laughs> best actions. <laughs> Alright. As you say, he he says Well in that case. If you don't mind about that, we could, of course, buy some herbs off of the market and use it to make a potion. Um, 30 gold. That's fair. Gold. Tough, tough, but fair. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. None, sir. He says, all right, uh, we'll have that ready for you uh, by tomorrow. Are there any other? How many would you like? Uh just one at these prices but you know <laughs> if 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 at some point in the future you you want to set up a consistent uh basis with a you know a, a favorite discount a favored employee discount uh yeah i'd be uh, i'd be interested in uh frequenting your shop all right then i'll consider it what's Tomorrow. your name oh uh my name is jerry Ah, Webster Faust Esquire. If Jerry, if you ever need an attorney, my services are always for hire. I'll keep it in mind. Thanks, Jerry. No All problem. Right. Oh wait, thirty gold up front, please. Uh, I mean, I, I'm happy to pay, but wouldn't it be half now and half of when I get it? I mean, I don't. I trust you, Jerry, but you know, there's a lot of shifters here. Some deceitful people who will do anything for money. <laughs> Talking from experience. <laughs> yeah, you know, I. So I, how about 15? I, I put 15 gold on the table. 15 gold and I'll be here right tomorrow to pick up the potion and you'll get your other 15. He slowly nods and says, all right, you drive a hard bargain. And None harder than yourself, Jerry. You really all right. Nice Thank you. I think he's going to spit in your potion. <laughs> <laughs> and Webster makes me so, like, uncomfortable on the inside. <laughs> yeah. Me too, it's just but, like uh, every single thing you do is just like turning on a dime and like <laughs> making other people feel bad. And <laughs> I'm, I'm coming around to it. <laughs> uh, I walk out. I walk. I walk out whistling like with my hands in my pocket. I was like, "All right, guys, I'm good." All right. All right. Like, I'll have you know that Blade hasn't lied a single time this entire campaign. That's great. We're great. four weeks in. Yeah. Keep it up. Yeah. You want to? <laughs> 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 I don't know if Blade can lie. Glass I have a milk. negative three to deception. You can lie. I'm hard. tempted. I'm tempted to cast command on you and tell you to lie, <laughs> but I won't. He, he can lie, but nobody will believe him. Yeah, he, he can, can lie, but it's really, really no. bad. It's like you command <laughs> me to lie. I say no. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it creates a paradox and everything explodes. <laughs> <laughs> my contract explodes. That's my <laughs> So you have to pass a wisdom check, I think, for... Uh, I, for I like head. the idea that, like, you 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 using the command spell is that you write instructions on a contract, and then you just sign their name. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. That's an actually... That's an interesting flavor. Yeah. Uh, I'll think on it. Uh, yeah, so, um, all right. Uh, maybe we should go check out the Wizard's Guild. Yeah, do you want to find uh, Mr. Cat? At this time, like, as they're saying that, should I just, like, appear out of an alley? <laughs> um, for the sake of, uh, expedience, <laughs> we'll say, um, 
as they're kind of walking down to the guilds, you kind of run into each other as you're heading back up to the market. Hey, I got the job. Great, you know, I got new, I got new clothes, and I kind of bang on my chest. So did I, and I also bang. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but 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 we already had a job. Why did you hire your? Why did you go get more work? More work. More money. I like to be busy. It keeps the mind uh, off of bad things. Well, okay. Yeah, um, what else keeps the mind off of bad things? Prayer. Do not say God. Oh. <laughs> so lame. I like. I, I. I look at. I look at Blade, and I'm like, ugh. I agree. While, Don't while, you while, start. While this is happening, I'm just like staring at the sun lovingly. Uh, roll constitution <laughs> saving throw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How's your? How's your? <laughs> your corneas burn. <laughs> your sweet, sweet corneas. <laughs> Be careful, Fatty, with this roll. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> I got a 16. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah, you're rolling dice? Yeah. For now, um, your eyes are saved. It's, um, <laughs> it's not yeah, too bad. Uh, um, they start to burn a little bit, but like you haven't gone blind. Like, spots in your eyes for, Good. like, I'm the just next like, hour. Oh, I always do this. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, does... Does your god require you to look at the sun? <laughs> no. He actually discourages it for more than, you know, more than a split second. Have you ever wondered why the priests of Halden are all blind? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, my patron doesn't make me do that. Well, mine, mine doesn't either, but... Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. Alright, so I guess let's go to this these charlatan wizards. I don't believe in wizards. I just want to say, as like uh, uh, as Webster, uh, what's you know, next? You tell me you don't believe in cats. <laughs> well, no, I, I, a cat is a thing. A wizard is so just it's like a wizard. <laughs> no, there's no such thing as wizards. They're just like book nerds who keep, think they have magic. <laughs> you know what, Webster? I'm kind of with you. I don't. I don't really trust wizards no. either. Any, True any... magic comes from higher powers. Exactly. You people are very confusing. <laughs> uh, things were um, simpler back home. And I, I, I kind of look around and say, "Hey, where's, uh, where's Miss Monk?" I think she said she was going to get food and then a bath. Uh huh. Yep. Hey, is my two-hour uh, um, soak? Up? Yeah, my two-hour soak done. Yeah, considering the time that it took everyone else to do their things, um, eventually your two hours are over, and you hear a knock on the door. Little... They'll. Mm. And a little voice says, um, yeah, your bath is, uh, your bath time's over now. <laughs> all right. I'll get up and start drying myself. I love right. that we all tried to, like, we're trying to stop this evil dragon from killing us. And you <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. sort of employment. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's self-care, really. If, if you can't care about yourself. I yeah. spent two weeks like... in a caravan walking my ass to the north. I want to be yeah. relaxed for a night. <laughs> Screw you. Yeah. So the thing All is right. that like, we don't have to do the scouting mission till like the end of the week. Yeah, we had three days of downtime. Yeah. And so like in amongst like us getting back together, Blade like mentions his like job sheet of like hunting down some animals and asks if you guys want to tag along and that he'd be sharing the money that he with anyone that decides to come. Mm. Did uh, they wash my cloak real nice? Um, yes, as you uh, come out, your, the rest of your clothes, you know, they're regular, but your cloak mm. is um, very feels very soft, um, no dirt on it or anything, no sweat. Excellent. No dried blood stains from when I nearly No died. dried blood stains. <laughs> Good. Um, and it also seems to appear to have been stitched back up. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and as you uh, head out, the uh, person at the desk says, ah, I hope you enjoyed your bath. I did. I will be returning at some point. Very nice. Um, it will be 40 gold for the two hours. Yep. And then for the um, stitching that we did, uh, two gold, please. All right. I'll hand it all over. All right. Yeah. Takes it. Locks it down. Says, all right. Thank you for your mm -hmm. patronage. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Now I'll walk out in search of other people. <laughs> See you. When all we, right. When we do meet up, like Blade asks Kyoko if they want to go on the hunting with them. Uh, I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. I'll then also ask the other three if they want to tag along or not. Um, uh, well, I'm not really, really much need... of a hunter. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't have to tag along. This is just like kill some wolves, kill some boars, bring them back to town. 
Yep. Yeah, I mean that's not really my thing. You do not have to uh, come. I'm just I'm just opening the offer. Yeah, if you, you know, don't like money, you don't have to come. You know, last I mean, I time do I like that. that. <laughs> last time I tried to shoot something, my crossbow broke. Um, <laughs> last time I tried to shoot something, I killed many many goblins. Yeah. And kobolds. I, I mm -hmm. had to I had to resort to my hadouken. Um, <laughs> why don't we Why don't we share what we learned at the library? So we we mm -hmm. tell um, we tell Kyoka yeah. and Crab well, and uh, Blade of Grass mm -hmm. what we learned at the library. When they Wait, tell me of the sages from the other countries, do I recognize anything from the Altonian one? Uh, roll history. Roll history. I'm helping because I'm also technically from Altonia, just a different part of... Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the cat part. The cat yeah. part. A very small right, 14. cat area 14, down yeah. far south. All right. Um, it sparks a slight memory. Um... You remember, like, when you were younger hearing stories of, like, you know, all of the great adventurers who have done mm. deeds across the continent. Um, right, right. And you do remember hearing of, like, these kind of these, uh, these four, like, sages from each country who, long in the past, uh, kind of used to maintain the peace. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, from the stories, you know, like, most of them passed away. Okay. A while ago. Most? Um, that's it. Most. Okay. Okay. That's about all you know. Yeah. Hey, I just want to ask a quick question, Fire. Because I'm from a very yes. small, like, fishing village, do I get to name, do I get to come up with the name of my town place myself? Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. I have a great dumb name. Don't ask what it is. <laughs> I'm ashamed of it. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us. Paris. Purse. Purse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, Blade is from the small fishing town of Paris. Paris. <laughs> All right. Wow. Um, <laughs> when he, I guess, uh, Kyoka, do you tell us like this thing about how you know they? Uh, I heard most of them had passed. I, okay. I, I heard stories of sages from. But most of them are passed on, what I hear. Most? Um, uh, yeah, well, yeah, would be el elf. El elves live a reasonably long time, yeah. yeah they might still be thing. kicking. Yeah. Maybe we should track down the elf. Maybe. I, uh, I, I have no idea where to start with that. All right. Well, yeah, maybe, I guess let's go to the charlatans first and, <laughs> and then uh, uh, check uh, are out. Are we going to the lawyer's guild? No. Oh, worse. you mean no? No, they're great. <laughs> yeah, worse. We're going to the to the heretical wizards. <laughs> heretical yeah. wizards. You guys are gonna be so interested when I sub wizard. <laughs> when <Some> you what? <laughs> uh, when I multi class into wizards. You're gonna multi class into <laughs> wizard? No. no. I'm you can actually fire into... Hadoukens. Mm. I'm, I'm um, gonna multi class into ranger at fourth level, maybe. No. No. Mm. Rogue I'm focusing on getting to third level scout, well, third level rogue, so I can become a scout and get all the extra proficiency and cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So okay. you all eventually make your way back down to the guild area um, and heading through. Eventually you find the much smaller than the rest. Um, it's just kind of like a single, um, single story building with only a few wings off of it. Um, that is the wizard's guild of sorts not really even a guild um it doesn't not many jobs come to them because most work that uh would be required for magic casters is found through shops um or more trusted means <laughs> because they're they're illegitimate i say that out loud <laughs> uh, all right well let's give an attempt to see what these these fools can find uh and uh, uh, so you... no go ahead all right i was just gonna say you guys enter <laughs> the building <laughs> um uh walking in it's fairly small it's a small front room um that is fairly cozy it has like multiple hallways leading off of it um you see there are a few people sitting at like a table in this small little front room as you walk in they kind of like Look up. Um, they're younger, um, but 
I just kind of enter there to this, like, look, kind of nod, and then uh, go back to reading what they were reading. Mm. Disrespectful idiots. Uh, illegitimate magic. Yeah, uh, I, I don't want to... I, like, I look at everyone who's with us, I was like, I don't really want to talk to these guys. Why doesn't someone else handle this? Uh, I'm not really up for uh, trying to sell to these fools. <laughs> Well, yeah. I don't know what we're doing here, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're trying to. Why don't to you see... take it, Fatty? Oh, I, you know, I'm I'm just as uh, excited about talking to these heretics as 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 you are. You do not need to call them such rude things. They're just people trying to learn. Learn illegitimate magic. They could be both. I'm pretty sure technically this is the right. most legitimate form of magic. I'll go up. I'll <laughs> go up to like. I guess I go up to one of the young. I guess people there. And mm -hmm. I'll say, like, you, boy, uh, we need some yeah, help. <laughs> Thousand-year-old high elf. <laughs> <laughs> Thousand-year-old high elf woman. <laughs> well, I try to find, I try to find, like, a young, like, page boy. Uh, All right. I'm, I'm a 37-year-old woman. <laughs> uh, as you walk up, you kind of find like a younger-looking scholar, and you say, like, "You yeah. boy," and they go, uh, "Yes, how you, <coughs> you sir?" Uh, we were trying to find information on a wizard that lived here uh, long ago. What can you tell us? Um, <clears throat> um a wizard. Um, I'm not sure. You think about, all uh, wizards know wizard. each other? Um, probably. If if you're looking for uh, information, I'm sure the headmaster probably has something. Oh Can God, you have a headmaster? Uh, yes. Um, if you He's... head down the main hallway, um, he normally stays in the his quarters. He's getting old. Well, okay. Uh, so I can just barge uh, into his quarters. Yes. I, and but I would no, like um, knocking. Yes. Okay. Um, he's quite he's quite frightenable. Um. So, Just because they practice uh, different magic from you does not mean they are any less people. They don't yeah. practice any magic. They do. What? <laughs> Smoke and mirrors. So, yes, I do. I have a book of magic. Oh, you have no, a book of magic. Oh, great. You have a book of magic. Good for you. <laughs> oh, really? Let me let me see that book of magic. Please, please tell them to roll initiative, please. <laughs> <laughs> As you say that, he says, um, no, it's, it's my spell book. You're not touching it. Uh, I might... Or the spell book. Does he, does he have it, like, at least that I can, like, see it? Like, is he holding it or something? Yeah, he currently has it open, and he's like... I minor illusion the ex a replica of that very book in my hand. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, you mean... And I, I, I'm just like, I, 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 like, pretend like I'm turning. I was like, oh, you mean this book? Oh, wow, what great... Like he's magic. a wizard. He, he, he also knows that spell. <laughs> Does he does he know minor illusion or does he know like, prestidigitation or some nonsense? Let me just real quick. Probably knows both because uh, he has more than two spell slots. <laughs> hey, yeah, he he knows plenty of spells because he's a good spellcaster. <laughs> um, he looks and he says, "Sure, sure, sure, yeah, mm. definitely." Blade points well, the book in your hand, and his finger goes through the book. Yeah, I, I like, I I dispel the book, and I was like, well, well, good luck on your studies. Uh, we're gonna go talk to the headmaster. Oh, Webster's such a piece of shit. Can I, as as we're leaving, can I touch the book and cast light on it so it's just like blaring light in his face? <laughs> oh, what a dick thing to do! Because the light spell lasts an entire hour. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can. And I, uh, so I do that, and I say, oops. Sorry about that. And then I just I, walk away. I low, I low I, five Fatty. I punch Fatty in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I make it. I, I make a proper attack though. So like. You know. You know. My, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know my, my shield is fatty? on my back, right? Does a twenty-one hit you though? Twenty-one still hits. Does a twenty-one hit? Yeah. Are you actually doing it? Yeah, and you take four damage. Make I cast. Constitution. All right. I I react with warding flare. You have disadvantage. <laughs> cool, a 17. <laughs> still hits. Damn it, it still hits. Still hits. <laughs> yeah, um, as, as you do this, you suddenly hear <laughs> right on your back as um blade just slams right into your shoulder blades, and you're like, Make oh. a concentration check. Do a what? Jesus. Oh, yeah, make, make a concentration check. How do, I, be, how do uh, I do that? Please. 
DC 10. I believe, I believe it's just it intelligence. No, it's a constitution or save. Oh, yeah, constitution save. Uh, 12. <clears throat> oh, all oh, right. He, he maintains his concentration. The light Damn stays it. up, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it flickers for a brief moment, but... Yeah, it's like... Did I, did I take damage? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah four yeah. damage. Uh, I turn around. <laughs> I'm getting mad. <laughs> um, You're playing with fire, fatty. Fire? Okay, I cast okay, guy no, bolts on no, this. No, 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 no! I grab, I grab fatty, I grab fatty. Just, just let it go. go. Okay, I start, I start doing the Hadouken, and then, and then I look no, at I, Webster. I, I, I look I at Webster. Back. I say, oh, oh. fine. <laughs> I pull him back. I was like, look, he, he. I whisper to Webster, uh, to fatty. He's an anthropomorphic cat. He doesn't know any better. <laughs> okay. <fair laughs> like enough. Wolf's just saying that it's like, um, Blade is like, yeah, you know better than that, don't you? Mm. <laughs> It's like, all right. I want to see how intimidating I actually am with my life. <laughs> I tell Fluffy this. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I say, listen, Fluffy. <laughs> Webster just saved your life. You remember that? Uh, Blade, as you as you say as you say that, you like try and make like a cool move, but you you just end up your bow slides off your back and it like clatters to the ground. You're like, oh. And, and then I pick it up and I make that like cap whining noise, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Uh, I look. I actually am like kind of embarrassed because I tried to make a big front at that page wizard boy, <laughs> and now my friends are making me look stupid. Uh, and so I'll just go. All right, we're 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 going to the headmaster. Thanks. Um, what's your name, boy? <laughs> Um, uh, I'm Mirik. Mm. Sorry, Mirik. I'll hand, uh, I hand Webster, I, I hand Mirik uh, my business card, and I'll say, if you ever want true power, you know, just come to me, and uh, you can really magnify your magical abilities. I'll keep it in mind. D and just tucks it away. Does Wizard, yeah. uh, does Merrick do anything about the light now emanating from his book? I, um, I, curiosity I, I, I dispel it. Okay. As you dispel it, uh, he's like, <laughs> and then goes back to studying it. <laughs> they never taught him counter spell yet, I guess. Uh, counter spell's a third level spell. Yeah. Yeah, he's like eight years old. <laughs> he looks uh, about like, you would say early teens, so. Okay. All right, fair enough. Uh, all right, so I head to where where he pointed the headmaster was. All right. So you got. <laughs> we actually can't continue. <laughs> You have audio. Oh, yep. The, the, the stream is now white. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, okay. I don't know what happened. Yep. Sorry about that, guys. Yep. That's okay. It happens. It happens. Where were we? In the Wizards Guild going up to knock on the door. Yes. I think, that's, um, that's, I think you're muted, Bats. Are you muted? Yes. Yeah. Bats is muted. You just have to keep that in mind. <clears throat> oh, and then everybody someone. moved. Oh, did we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, everyone but me moved. <laughs> I do. But yes, I'm a warlock now. I cast <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Look at this, Look at this magic. <laughs> he goes drunk with power. <laughs> Fear me and my powerful magic. <laughs> you suddenly want to sign that contract. <laughs> <laughs> Some good shit. All right. Well, while that's being figured out, you guys, um, Make your way uh, through uh, the uh, through the hallway, and eventually find yourself in like this long row of rooms. And all the way at the back, you see like kind of these large double doors, um, which uh, kind of had like "Headmaster" written above it. Does it have a name, or just says "Headmaster"? Um, it does have a name. Is it Headmaster or Guildmaster? Curiosity. Uh, it is yes. Headmaster. Okay. So you could probably uh, pull them both without much problem. Mm. Mm. Uh, the name at the top, um, 
says uh, Bunrick. Uh, what's funny about Bunrick? I don't know. How do you spell it? <laughs> uh, B U N R I K. Okay. Bunrick. Oh, wow. What is he? Like uh, a fucking gnome? Yeah, that's <laughs> like, like, yeah, well, we'll see, actually. Like, it's just an odd human name. I, I uh, hope he's well, a gnome. <laughs> his last name is uh, Fleet. Bunrick Fleet. Fleet spelled as in F E F L E E T. Ah, Navy man. <laughs> uh, okay, I. Uh, what is it? The I'll do the. What is it like shaving a haircut? The the knock. Nope. I no, guess. Does, da, 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 da. no, it's a dun, oh, that. Da, 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 dun, dun, that. Okay. Except you don't yeah, do the okay. dun, dun. Just like dun dun yeah. dun dun. Right. That's and I wait, think that's yeah. called that's called like shaving a haircut. All right. <laughs> yeah. So you just you just. And then from inside you hear a dun dun. <laughs> and from the inside you hear just like boom, boom, boom. you hear a Yes, who that, is it? Uh I come in and I'll say uh Webster Faust Esquire, uh attorney at law. We're uh um, I'm investigating Yeah. I'm investigating uh I'll just like walk in like I own the place. I don't even Yeah, bother. you walk in, you throw open the door, and you see standing on top of a desk is about a three foot tall gnome. Oh god damn it, he is a gnome. <laughs> with a long gray beard that hangs down to about his knees. Blade, um, like strolls in next to Webster and gives him a gnomish greeting. Yeah, um he <laughs> He has Let's a uh, Alright. He has a giant staff that's like twice the size of him. <laughs> and he's wearing this wizard's hat that pretty much is like twice his size <laughs> on his head. I must say you have easy choice in Hattery. Why, thank you. I quite enjoyed myself. Are I there like myself at? Are are there like guest chairs in sort um, of like in there the, is, is a like single office? chair? Yes, uh, there is a is single it, chair. Is it like adjacent to his desk? It's uh kind of like his desk, his chair, that chair. Okay, I'm gonna take the guest chair. I'm gonna put my feet up on his desk. All uh, right. Uh, well, and, um, uh, and I'm gonna say. Um, we're looking for information on uh, an old wizard who may have uh, magicked some weapons for a group of people about 200 years ago. Do you know anything about it? As you say, as he um, grabs like what seems like a, a chocolate-covered treat out of like a thing and just toss it up and like, hmm, a wizard, you say? Um, well, I can't say um, I haven't met a lot of those. If Any specifics? If you hadn't. Any Wait, name? You, uh, no, we're, we're trying to figure out the name. Uh, he maybe did a number on a sword, making it fiery. Is that hmm. it? Let me think. Um, you know, there was this fellow I knew once knew. Um, he was a great blacksmith. Um, he used to make the finest weapons. Really great person. Uh, would he by any chance have made a, a suit of magical iron armor? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> um, anyway, wizards, yes, wizards. Um, let's see. First thing, um, if you want to know anything, get your feet off my desk. I think about it for a second and I'll like slowly put one down and then the other one. Blade makes sure he's like he's standing next to you and puts his like poor like hand on your shoulder and then like digs the claws in ever so slightly <laughs> i look at blade i go this is a good suit you touch the suit you die. <laughs> i i, I put my I put my you I insult my, the wizard you die i i, I put my hand on on blade and i say <laughs> <laughs> now it's like now and it's then, like a hand on then, shoulder you know what, <laughs> you know what? I, I, I i put my hand on blade and i kind of take out my prayer book and i turn to the page uh that has inflict wounds on it I just kind of look at him. You, you don't. Why do you have a prayer book? I, I, you I, wouldn't I, have a prayer book. No, I do. You I, I, what? I'm a cleric. Yeah, but it wouldn't. I, I, have, I carry. I carry. But it wouldn't have inflict wounds. It wouldn't on have it. a spell on it though. Uh, yeah, no, if you had a no, book with spell. You would be a wizard. The, no, I mean my, the thing is, maybe my, like, my prayer book. So all, all of my spells have all of their spells. 
So all, all yeah, of yeah, my sorry. cleric spells are prayers, and they're all in my prayer. That makes you a wizard. Uh, no, it's me a cleric because my power comes from my deity, <laughs> heathen. Yeah. No, honestly, <laughs> that's that's one of the more reasonable things. <laughs> yeah, that's been all said. Right. Uh, yeah. All right. So as this happens, the uh, old gnome kind of like nods, looks, and he's like, "Very good. All right. So wizards." Uh, let's see. If you're talking about a wizard who made magical weapons, um, I did know a bloke a long time ago. Um, I believe he, um, left. He left the city. Um, said he was gonna find some solitude or something like that. Did he give a direction? Or a name? Um, well, not north. No. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> that only leaves east south and west right i mean is there was he do you i mean is there anything else to go on i mean would we be able to find this wizard um well i do know his name because i'm a smart gnome his name was darius darius yes darius was he, he was, was he human um i believe he was Uh, I think he was Elven. I'm not sure, though. Okay. Huh. Um, he was getting to the older end when I knew him. He was, like, 500 years old. And where's, where did he come from? Um, let's see. I actually don't know. Um, he came with those, uh, you know, those howdy-towdy uh, adventurer people, you know? Yeah. Nah. Yeah. They were a whole lot of fun. You, um, do you have I any would, idea like, where he would have went? Patting the shoulders, like, are we hoity-toity uh, adventuring people? <laughs> no, no. I whispered, no, no, we're cool, we're cool. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. okay. Um, um, let's see. If he wanted um, solitude, he probably went somewhere, you know, lonely. Um, really? So um, you can, like, <laughs> cross out the coast because there are a lot of villages there. Mm -hmm. um, forests have monsters, but... Uh, I'm not sure. It was probably down south. I, I know he came from that area originally, at least, he mm. told me. Uh, you know, did Darius, do you know if Darius um, crafted any sort of magical weapons for those adventures, those hoity-toity adventures of his? Well, I actually, um, I'm fairly sure he was um, a, a, like an unofficial member. I'm not really sure. Um, mm. he like uh, oh, it's the bridesmaid, quite... never the bride. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was um, <clears throat> he was quite the enchanter. He loved to uh, oh. that was kind of his thing. Yeah, yeah, he also had like I don't know some sort of deal with someone. I'm not sure. Eh. Well, thank you for the name. I believe our next priority should be a. Uh... Well, first of all, figuring out where he actually is, and then, you know, getting some money and visiting this man, seeing if we can employ his services. Yeah, he says. Well, if, you, um, if you're looking to find him, just know he um, he's a little bit on the cold side. Okay. This is Northgard. Is this, is, is this side. a play on words? Is he a rude person? Is he, like, cold? Oh, no, he's not rude. He just doesn't talk a lot. Oh, okay. Okay, his bats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Let me. I guess if um, if we were trying to find any sort of enchanted artifacts that Darius may have created, uh, you have any advice on how we could go about that? There's a giant uh, dragon that may be attacking the city at some point, and we're all going to die if we don't do it. So, I mean, think very hard. That sounds like quite the predicament. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, uh, quite the conundrum. Let's see. I wasn't alive when I had him. I haven't seen a dragon myself. I heard stories about it, though. Um, oh, you'll see one pretty soon, I think. Great! Oh. I can't wait. <laughs> I have always wanted um, to be the dragon myself as well. Anyway, if you're looking for where the weapons were kept, I would, um... I, I wouldn't have the faintest idea. You'd probably have to find him and ask him. He was closer with the actual 
you know, adventure people than I was mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe they all like, you know, we're all prophecy like, and we're like, ah, we're going to hide them. Mm-hmm. Wow. Did you did you ever meet? Did you ever meet Darius? Oh yeah, yeah. We talked quite often. Well, I was I mean, kind of like his pseudo apprentice. Oh well, I I've heard that you know wizards can cast a spell to communicate with people they know from long distance. I mean, can you do that for us? Unfortunately, um, I don't actually uh, specialize in that type of magic. No, yeah, well, what a surprise! I was. I was more of a uh, a learner for um, the uh, the explodey spells. Uh, there... Evocation, I believe they were called, right? Yes, yes, evocation. Is there this is there... Your cat smart knows cat. more about magic than, uh, <laughs> than the headmaster of a wizard school? <laughs> Does, uh, is there is there anyone here who you can think of that can uh, that can communicate with? Darius? Uh, mm-hmm. Communicate with no. Um, but we have scrangs, uh, whales. Oh, and and what can we do with that? Well, with a scrying well, if you know the name of something, you can scry on it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that thing. Yeah. What? How what, much yeah. Would it uh, we we of course we of course charge money. Of course, of course for you it. do. Fucking yeah. magical mercenaries over here. Yes, uh, it's been a while since I uh, looked over prices, but I believe we charged, um, what was it? 43 gold for a scry. No. That is a Good specific day. number. What, what, what is a scry? It's, uh, basically, it's like a bowl of water, and then you do a magic spell, and then you can see whatever it is your target is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's gobbledygook. It's nonsense. Let's go, guys. I, I was just messing with you all. It's free. You think mm. we... God, come on! We're a wizards guild. We have, we have morals. <laughs> I'm glad someone here does. Uh, I I was like minor illusioning, like green fire in my hand, and <laughs> causing it to disappear. And uh, did you say something? <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, right, if you want to find the scrying, um, just like head out back. We have the uh, wells there. There's three of them. Ah, uh, why not? I mean. Well, if this hocus pocus isn't gonna work, we're back to square one anyways. So might as well give it a shot. Yep, nothing to lose. Yeah, Fatty, why don't you like pray to your god, and maybe I will. Maybe we'll get something that way. Yeah, yeah. Blade just that, walks yeah. up to the scrying pool and says, "Dayrus." <laughs> <laughs> you guys, um, head out back as you were discussing this. Um, you open it up and you're like, "Ah, oh, God, you know, I'll pray to mine." Uh, Blade, you walk up and you say, "Dayrus." <laughs> And the pool <laughs> shimmers Aww. before eventually clearing. And you see a single mountain that seems to be just standing, um, leading into a chain of mountains that eventually crawl up around the landscape before it eventually closes back up. I take out this uh, like map I have in my pocket. It's, a, it's awfully drawn, like as though <laughs> a cat had gotten their claw, dipped it in ink, and then tried to draw a map. <laughs> <laughs> and then I draw this like mountain on it. It's it's awful. It looks absolutely horrible. Uh, do I? I look at it. Do so. Do, do any of us recognize like a solitary mountain to the south of us? I mean, I would. I would think the dwarf would. <laughs> That's yeah. racist. Yeah. Racial stereotype. Um, um, well, I am a wanderer, and uh, you know, I do uh, generally recall the layout of terrain and settlements and geography. Uh, yes. Um, as a dwarf, you would, you would actually fairly well recall the like terrain of places that you've traveled, um, because that's kind of what dwarves do. <laughs> um, but um, looking at it, it's it appears to be very familiar to one of the multiple mountains in the southern chain that kind of is the border between Northgard and Exandria. Um, you don't know an exact location. You don't, it doesn't look like you traveled through it, but you can kind of recognize it as that area. Mm. Cool. Mm. While we're at the scrying wells, can I lean over one and whisper Kato? If I can. Kato. <laughs> Kato. All right. Huh. Yes. Um, 
as you do, um, it kind of, once again, it flows blue for a second, and the water shimmers and opens up. Um, da, da, da. I'm just tracking stuff. All right, yeah. Um, and you see um, kind of a door. Mm. And it just, it doesn't open, but you're kind of like, the scribe passes yeah. through the door, right. and you see just kind of a row of beds. A row of beds. Yes. Yeah. Before it eventually. I wonder what it does with dead people. Why don't you try? Do you guys know any dead people? <laughs> are you are you asking the, I... the fountain this? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> give it a try. Yeah. Give it. Okay. A, um. Give um it a just a second. Um. Blade then like thinks for a moment and then says the name of his brother, Fortune of the Bold. What do you say? Oh, sorry, my kind of uh... Fortune of the oh, Bold. Was... Fortune of the brother, Bold. His brother. Of the bold. Yeah. All right. Who's who's Fortune Crab of the Bold? Hmm. Is Crab frozen on your guys' screens? Or is that just me? Uh oh he is frozen. Uh, he is frozen. Oh no, 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 right. not anymore, not anymore. Oh, he's back. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So yeah, I, uh, I, Blade uh, says um, Fortune of the Bold, who is like his brother who passed away. But do you say yep. that to us, that it's your brother who passed away? If you ask who's Fortune of the Bold, then yeah, yeah say, it's my brother I, I said, who passed away a while back. That's a really cool name. Um, How come you got Blade of Grass? It is based <laughs> on prophecies. Oh. You see, all of our um, people are named based off the, of the situation and where they are, the sky... The stars. It's it's a very complicated process. Oh. Oh yes. So, uh, and gobbledygook. <laughs> My brother's name's Steve. <laughs> anyway, uh, Blade, as you uh, say that, it um the pool kind of like shimmers once again, and this time it doesn't show like a dead body, but what it appears to show is. The last time that you saw him alive, so it's or like at least this, last like, time, not like nighttime scene with like in a large field of like grass and all that. And you with, like, see a single um, swords. Yes, and you death. see it's kind of this night scene with a, a field of just like calm grass, almost. It's just kind of a breeze, and you see a single tabaxi Simba. that's laying in the middle of it, and you see this intricate blade that's sticking out of him. Um, with these winding patterns on it, um, with almost like an emerald green color, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was well, that was Sticking out of kind of disappointing? I do not know what I expected. Is that the same blade as the blade we saw Blade try to sell? I didn't sell, I just got it appraised. Or, or that the yeah. one that he got appraised. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It is the blade yes. you see on his hip. Did, it is. Did you kill your brother? No. Where did you get that? Can I sword? do an in inside check? Can I do an inside check? <laughs> inside checks. You can do an inside check. <laughs> Is this the first lie he's telling me? <laughs> fifteen. No, I, I got fifteen. Kill. You got fourteen. Uh, you got a four. Uh, uh, Blade, do you want to roll persuasion? Yeah, I'm not very uh, insightful. Yeah. Yeah, I'll roll I'll persuasion. Roll. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's a natural twenty. That that That's is a natural very twenty. Uncommon. Seventeen. Um, <laughs> as Blade he says this. It actually like Blade, does Blade appear. Blade like has like the like sad sort of look on his face, and it's like, he, this is a line that he has had to say many, many times. Is he just looks at you like completely dead? It's like, no, I did not kill my brother. It was not me. Mm -hmm. Do you need me to? You know, if I, I've represented many fratricides cases, I would rather not so... talk about this right now. Okay. Um... Maybe some other time, but not right now. Okay. exactly what that other brother I represented said. <laughs> he grips the sword on his hilt tightly. I'd say his like knuckles are going white, but he has fur on his hands. Leave him alone. Leave him alone, Webb, you sycophant. What? Sycophant? I don't know what I was expecting. I probably should have just kept it to myself. This is mm. what they get for oversharing. Uh, I'm trying to think... Um... 
Maybe we should try to figure out the name of that elf adventure who might still be alive, and then we can come back and try and scry for that guy, or that woman, or that person. Maybe some other time. I want to get out and get something done. Oh yeah, okay. as you guys um, are kind of like finishing up, you hear a window for, open up, and you see the headmaster poke his oversized hat out. And you guys says, oh, I just remembered something, by the way. <clears throat> Look for the symbol of a dead oak tree. Hmm. Why? I don't know. It's just like hey, something that... The cryptic that... wizard said something to you. You just keep it in mind, okay? He, he, he liked the symbol. I'm not sure. It, trust me. Okay. Um, thanks. From what I've learned... Yeah. And he just whoosh, whoosh, and hops back in. God. What a I mean, weird. we all agree he's on something, right? Oh. <laughs> he's on magic. He's on a higher plane of existence. Yeah, because of Molly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, all right, so what do you guys Okay. Do? Um, well, I don't want to just head to a mountain that we don't know where it is. So we should I try to figure out and start doing my contract. I respect that oh. you want to honor contracts. We could go uh, hunting. Yeah, that's what my contract is—a a hunt. If you yeah. and Kyoko or anyone wants to come with me, I'm willing. Yeah, I might find some clues down, maybe south of the city, towards that mountain. Anyway, mm. see if we get the skyline to match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we do some scouting for the mountain whilst completing my hunting. Okay. Let's do it. All right. All right. And you are all gonna go. Yep. Sure. All right. Yeah, and um, I believe around this time it's kind of end. It's getting towards later in the afternoon. Mm. So we'll leave this for the next morning, then technically. Yeah. yeah it's so getting like, late. So I guess like we'll just do the like fade to like night time, and then in the morning. Yeah. All right. So you all head back to the church. Um, find yourself a night's rest, mm. and um, I believe that's where we're going to end. Unfortunately, that is uh, okay. all yep. that I have time for. Okay. Okay. Can yeah, we, uh, Fatty, just make a note to ask your church about this? Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me mark off this. All right. So, so that I can actually know what I have to prepare for next time. <laughs> the hunt plus mountain. Search. All right. Cool. And, and I will look up f cat fratricide laws. Cat fratricide. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The law is if you kill if you kill family, you get exiled. Hmm. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll represent you, and we can get you back. That'd be a maybe. There's like a, a little. Yeah, that would be a. Blade has been That'd exiled be a... for a while. Yeah. It's like a... that's. You... We run four yeah. episodes of a full-blown trial. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you need to ask for forgiveness, the Lord Halden... I would have to study so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got the problem you, don't is worry. That <laughs> the problem is that, like, in, like, the thing, like, there was no proof that Blade didn't do it. Mm -hmm. No, I think... But there's... I, think <laughs> I think we can deduce what happened. Hmm. Hmm. I've seen okay. Mickey of a murder. I, I, I got this. Yeah. <sighs> I think I've I, seen three episodes of Columbo. You know what? I've, 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 <laughs> even though even though you punched me in the back, you dick, I still <laughs> believe that you have a good heart. I was just trying to get you to like disrupt your spell. <laughs> and mm. uh, I, I I don't believe that you can you could have ever killed your brother. Right in the time we befriended them for this like week and a half, you've really bonded. <laughs> well, no, I, I haven't bonded, but you know I've seen him stick up for people who need it and yeah. and you know defend people who. Um, I have not yeah. harmed a single innocent man except for Fatty just before. When well, I, I, was, yeah, I mean, Fatty, to, Fatty wasn't to, that innocent. Let's let's be real. To but, uh, your <laughs> guilt, Fatty was being a dick to, as per his character sheet. It's, but uh, to assuage your guilt for killing your brother, you're trying to be better. Of course, yeah. I completely get it. Yeah. No, I think uh, I think he can, can I can I before we leave? Can I ask him? Mm. Um, can I like take him aside and say, were you framed for the death of your brother? I do not know. You don't know? Can I... He totally it... killed his brother. Oh, no. <laughs> if, you, if you don't know you were framed, then you did it. 
<laughs> what do you what do you that mean? That is you how it works. Know. I did not kill him. <laughs> I whispered Blade of Grass, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? I will not stop talking. This I will never know. You will never know. Freedom of speech. <laughs> uh, Freedom of meow. All right. Why don't we why don't we leave this conversation for the next uh yeah, our, our yeah, next session. Yeah. Be, next session. Next. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Um, I'm going to end the stream in a little bit, but uh, over Discord, let's uh, figure out when we're going to meet next. We can do that a little bit later okay. too. Yeah. Um, did we get? A, yes. Did anything happen that we get XP for this session? Um, maybe. My awesome negotiating. Uh, maybe some of the uh, the talk. We'll see. Mm. I want punching fatty XP. is definitely like yeah. Punching fatty is definitely like fifty XP. I really awesome. just wanted yeah, we'll to like another fifty. It, you know, I just learned how to like do three d ten damage. <laughs> I, I, I just Fine. need fifty more XP and I'm level three. Damn it! I need a punch <laughs> we fatty. Just, we just keep hitting each other. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep beating up each other for XP. We like go back to the church long rest. I need to kill a goblin. <laughs> I need to kill a goblin in order to get XP. Where's hey, like Thrak? Yeah, well, hey, uh, no, leave Thrak alone. Mod. He's a good guy. <laughs> Okay, I'll get like Zerk or Hothric no, tag no, no, or even no. Mon. The goblins are our friends. You stop that. <laughs> Dang it. You stop that. Okay, guys. Thanks so much. Um, I'm going to end the stream. Um, hope you guys had fun. Hope you guys had fun. Um, and I will, uh, yeah, we will see everybody next time. Okay, goodbye, stream. Bye. Bye.